Professor Dave and Chegg here. We know that there are different kinds of chemical bonds, such as ionic and covalent, but there is actually a lot more to discuss in between. So let's talk about polarity now. When two atoms interact, they can either share electrons to form a covalent bond, or one can transfer one or more electrons to the other to form ions, which then form an ionic bond with one another. But the electrons in the covalent bond may not be shared precisely evenly. The electron density may be skewed more toward one atom than the other. This would be called a polar covalent bond. We can see this as sort of in between a strictly nonpolar covalent bond and an ionic bond, and we can say that the ionic character of the bonds increases going this way, from electrons being shared evenly to electrons being shared unevenly to one atom actually taking electrons from the other. The parameter that will determine which of these bonds forms is electronegativity, or the measure of how well an atom holds electron density close to itself in a covalent bond. This increases going up and right on the periodic table, excluding the noble gases, such that fluorine is the most electronegative element. This is why bonds between atoms of the same element are nonpolar, because they must have identical electronegativities, so the electron density must be shared equally. If one has an electronegativity value that is at least 0.5 greater than the other, the one with greater electronegativity will pull the electron density towards itself to create a polar covalent bond. If the difference is more than around 1.8, the more electronegative element will simply take electrons from the other. For a polar covalent bond, we can denote which atom holds the electron excess by labeling with a delta minus symbol. The electron deficient atom will be delta plus. These are partial charges, which we can almost think of as fractional charges, meaning some fraction of a plus one or minus one charge. We can draw the dipole with an arrow, putting another line over the side of the arrow toward the electron deficient side of the molecule, almost like a plus symbol, and the arrow will point toward the region with electron excess. In organic chemistry, there are a number of polar covalent bonds that we will see over and over again. Carbon-oxygen bonds, carbon-nitrogen bonds, and oxygen-hydrogen bonds are the most common, but carbon-fluorine bonds, nitrogen-hydrogen bonds, and a few others will also be important. We can also look at electron density diagrams, also called electrostatic potential maps. Here, we can visualize the electron cloud around the molecule, and red regions represent electron excess, while blue regions represent electron deficiency, with the gradient of colors from blue to red representing increasing electron density. This helps us visualize the electron density distribution, which helps us understand what kinds of chemistry a molecule will participate in. We can also imagine how two polar molecules will interact via something called the inductive effect. Induction is the shifting of electron density in sigma bonds in response to the electronegativity of nearby atoms. Inductive effects will come up again later as we examine certain reactions. Hopefully this was all review from general chemistry, but either way, it is very important to be able to recognize polar bonds in a molecule, because knowing the electron-rich and electron-poor sites on a molecule is absolutely critical in being able to predict how a molecule will behave. Professor Dave for Chegg, see you next time.